My legs! <laughs> I forgot to mention that this video is about power-ups. I've done this about 20 times already and I'm tired. So, this video is about power-ups. Right, so now it's time to add power-ups to my Infinite Runner. I think this is what's going to separate my game from other games in the genre. But let me show you how they're going to work. I drew up this amazing demo just to show you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, basically you'll have your main character, then a power-up icon would show up maybe every 20 seconds. Once they collect that icon, another icon will show up down the bottom, and that will be a random power-up. The user can stack these if they want to, or they can use them straight away. Uh, I'm basically giving it up to the user to decide when and where they use their power-ups. Once the user decides to use their power up, they can click on the icon down the bottom and then that'll activate their power up. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to allow the user to use more than one at a time. I guess it'll depend on what the power ups end up being. That's something I'm looking forward to defining later on in this video. So now you know the basic idea behind how power ups are going to work. I did a little brainstorm here just quickly on what I think would make some good power up. It can be anything from healing to gathering money. I had an idea to do a revival. Also teleport could be one. I do know that I want to base these power ups in reality. So when I come to draw them, I'm sure I'll have more ideas around what they could be. So the first thing to do is get organized. I'm going to write up some tasks on what I think I'll need to complete the power ups in the game. I might not get around to all of them today but you know I'm gonna try and do as many as I can. I always like to do this before I start anything. I think planning is like one of the most important things when you take on a project like this. So I've written up a whole range of tasks from designing the logo to the little animation that plays once you collect it. And I think today we'll just go through them one by one and try and draw them all up. The first one I'm going to go ahead and create is the power up icon. This was my first attempt. Uh, it looks pretty good. I quite like the uh, shimmer effect on the gem, but I decided to scrap this idea. I think this sort of power up has been done before, so I decided to take it in a slightly different direction. I was kind of lost initially, so I decided to come up with another mood board for just the power ups. So for this particular icon, I decided to draw inspiration from real life. Since I'm the main character in the game, I had a look at what I do in the daily and what kind of powers me up. And at the moment, I'm drinking a lot of Red Bull. And so I thought, why not make a can? I thought that would be like a, a pretty cool looking motif. I wanted it to be obvious that you could pick it up. So I decided to animate the colors changing uh, in a kind of rainbow pattern. And then I also wanted to animate a shimmer effect and it floating up and down. It might not look like it, but this pixel art stuff takes a long time. And I'm kind of learning as I go, so it takes about three attempts for every sprite that I do. And what you're seeing now is just the final attempt that I did. So from my final attempt, here's my final result. Just look how many frames I had to animate. So now we move the task from working on to done. Ah, oh, feels good to have the first one done and dusted. Right, so now it's time to choose another one. Mm, I think I'll go for the collection animation. Yeah, that seems like a good idea to me. The collection animation will be the animation that shows after a player has collected the can in game. Here I've got some just sparkly effects. Now I originally did these in white, but I decided that I way preferred them in color. This task was pretty easy breezy, didn't take too long to do, so it's on to the next one. Sweet, we're cranking through them now. So the next one I'll be working on is the power up icons down the bottom. Just to give you an idea of where they go, as you can see here, I have the canvas, there's the main player, uh, and this is what I'm talking about, these uh, cans down the bottom here. As I said in my first video, I wanted this game to take inspiration from my life, and so that's what I did. All these power-ups are based on things of my past and stories. So this first power-up I imagine to be a revive. I tried to make it look like a drink I could see out there on a shelf, and as you can see I had fun with the name. Once the player dies, I imagine they could choose this and then be reborn. 
For a lot of my life, I had an unhealthy relationship with money. I always considered money hard to come by and hard to get. It wasn't something I considered, you know, obtainable. I think this all spawned from my childhood. I used to watch my parents struggle with money a lot. I think that's what led to me having kind of an unhealthy relationship with money. And it was only till recently that I switched that mentality. I had to rewire my brain. I used to tell myself every day that money came easy to me. And as corny as that sounded, actually helped me in the long run. Maybe within a week after I started doing that, I noticed that uh, money was coming to me a lot easier and I knew that, you know, the reason why I struggled with money in the past was because of these thoughts in my head and that was something really powerful that I learnt about myself. At this point you're probably asking yourself, so what's that got to do with this game? What I wanted to do is instead of people having to go through a metamorphosis of their self, they could just drink a power up and gain the ability to collect money faster. As for the can design, what I tried to do was create stacks of coins in the background. I wanted it to be noticeable to the player on what this power up did at a glance. So there you have it, money magnet. Another quick one here, portal potion. Uh, it makes portals and junk, uh, that's about it. Right, so we're cranking through them now. Uh, this next one's called Bubble Boy. I think it's gonna have something to do with maybe having a shield or something. When I was a kid, uh, I used to live in the city with my family, until one day they decided to move to a small country town. Now this was a massive change for me. I can't stress how much I didn't fit in here. And uh, my dad reckons it was because I'd been sheltered my whole life, like I'd lived in a bubble. So he's, instead of helping the problem, he just started calling me Bubble Boy. Eventually, some kids at school found out, and that became my nickname for a couple years to come. So thanks, Dad, for, for the fun nickname. It was great. This one I decided to call Time Tea. I started off by adding a couple colours and making a little gradient. Really had no plan going into this one, but I had an idea. I was trying to channel old VHF tapes into this design. Here I thought it started to look pretty cool. Uh, I like the glitchy effect and I think it will match what I want to do with it in the game. I don't really want to give away all the secrets to the game, so you'll just have to keep tuned and see what it eventually becomes. Here's the final product. I think it looks pretty good myself. I think I'll add more cans into the game later, but I think for now, we can move on to the next task. Player power-up animations. For this task, I've got to animate what happens when you get a power-up. So this will be while you're running along, and what you'll basically see when you hit this button down the bottom. Here I am just making my first one. This one's for Portal Potion. That was actually the first can I made, so I decided to make this the first power-up I made. Found it quite tricky to make this portal. I might go back and clean it up later, but I think for now it's a good placeholder, and what I want to do eventually is suck the character into it, but I don't really know how that works with sprites, so I'm just kind of happy keeping it where it is there. The next one I worked on was Bubble Boy. Because this one had so much relevance to me when I was a kid, I decided to make it the next one that I made, and I thought making a shield animation would probably be the easiest bit. I was kind of just trying to make this shape where it kind of exploded out from the center of the character. It was quite difficult. Uh, this isn't my first attempt, that's why it looks so clean. I think this is my second or third attempt trying to make it work, and that's the final product. I think it looks pretty good, and I hope that I can make all the other animations at this high quality. I think for now I'm finished with this task, I'll probably come back and do some more, but I think it's time to move on to activation animations. And this is what I have, I think you've seen me draw enough pixel art for one day, so here you go, the final animation. It might change a bit from now until when the game comes out, but I think as a starting point this probably works pretty good. And that's the last task I'm going to do in this video. Here's a look at the final assets, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!